for you to join. Ah, there we go, there's a recording started. So we've got lots of lovely sessions for you to join this afternoon, uh, one of which is coming up just now. So thank you all for joining us. And I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Petrina Law to OER23 um, with her session, Supporting Ukrainians with OER on OpenLearn. So I will hand over to Petrina. And if you've got any questions, comments, uh, do feel free to pop them in the chat. I will be keeping my eye on that throughout the session. So over to you, Petrina. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for coming today. I can see there's just a few people, a few participants, one of whom I know, and that's Anna. So hello, Anna. Um, I just I wanted to start just by asking um, a quick poll, actually, if you would just like to say yes, whether you know about OpenLearn or no, that you don't know much about OpenLearn. Yeah, you do know about OpenLearn. OK, so for the person that's just joined, just a quick poll to say, uh, have you already heard of OpenLearn? Do you know about OpenLearn? Okay, so there we go. So there we go. There's a, our anonymous poll says that you all know about it. Uh, okay, so I will I will move through my slides slightly quicker then with regard to explaining what on earth it is, um, if that's helpful. So. What I'm going to talk about today is the OU social mission via OpenLearn, just as a quick reminder, um, and then say a little bit about um, the invasion of Ukraine and, and what that actually meant to us as a department and what we thought we wanted to do about that, how we could help and, and what we've done and what we plan to do, um, how we've provided supportive materials and what we want to do next and what that's taught us really, the whole experience. So just ever so briefly then, um, this is just a quick slide that we produce, which is to say, uh, explain the size of the open university. So it's a pretty big distance university um, with a large proportion of students with disability um, and a relatively young cohort as well. But you don't need any qualifications to study with the open university. So we have a royal charter as well, which means that we give learning to the community at large. So that free learning element is something that's been delivered through our BBC relationship and through our free and online learning relationship as well for many years now over over 50 years the university is and open has been running now for 16 years 17 years i can't count anyway it's been going a long time and um we're deeply proud of this activity so what that means is people come into the platform now mostly via google it's just natural search that people come in and find us they're searching for information and they dive in they make an uh, inquiries they find themselves in the platform perhaps they were just looking for information not necessarily seeking to sit forward and study something but they could look at an article a video an interactive or they could enroll on a free course and a proportion of those learners go off and become our students and that's the kind of business element to all of this it was never its original raison d'etre but it is it remains the case not surprisingly really with an audience of so many um, that a proportion of people go off and make an inquiry, which is good. It's brilliant because that's what it's about getting people through at the end of the day to realise that they can study um, and they don't need qualifications for an undergraduate degree to do so at the Open University. Many of those people can't afford to study, never will be able to afford to study. And so Open Learn <coughs> excuse me, is there for them too. OK, I just got that. I seem to be jumping through. I'm getting ahead of myself. Here we go. Something a bit funny about my slides. Excuse me just a second. Um, right, there we are. That's better. So this is a snapshot of Monday's homepage to give you an idea of the type of content that's on the platform in terms of the subject, the broad subject areas, and also the type of content you can see. So that might be a collection of, of um, articles. It could be a video. The, the, the one that you can see primary education, that's a badged course. Managing my money for young adults is a badged course. There's a game there called Perplex. Um, there's, there's all sorts of things, basically, videos, articles. You can learn a language. And that just is a snapshot. And that home page gets changed, um, if not daily, then certainly on a weekly basis. It's often reflecting topical information as well, things that have come up in the news. And that's the lovely thing about what we produce is that we get a piece of everything that's come out of the curriculum. Um, as this slide sort of demonstrates, a tasty slice of everything we make is shared openly. So we get a slice of everything that's from our curriculum that's shared for free, but also we commission 
with our wonderful colleagues in our various faculties content that we think is topical and pertinent to modern debates and that really comes through on open learn so it's not your sort of what you would necessarily expect from a, a university um, to see these kind of really interesting topical things being brought to the front and some of those things won't yet have made their way into the formal taught curriculum they could be outputs of research so open learn is this brilliant place for publishing those short interesting pieces of information and then taking those subjects further over time and turning them into courses and if we think there's a, a desire to study something at course level this is the impact data from the last year and i don't mean to december i mean actually it was the last academic year 21 22. this gives you some idea of the scale of the platform now so you've all said you're familiar with it but perhaps you're not clear that since the pandemic things have really really grown in terms of our our numbers to the platform so <clears throat> excuse me that was 16 million visits in that year um, from a quite a broad range of places in the world we have a, a less than half now coming from the uk we have a, a much bigger international audience which is critical to this presentation actually when we think about who's using the platform we spread our content over different platforms you can see we had 5.7 million youtube video views so any videos that are made for open learning courses get put onto youtube as well as a way of reaching different audiences with free learning too we also had 660,000 of our own student visits so 660,000 students but, but many visits by our students to use the platform too we awarded 44,000 digital badges in that year and as you can see for the uk audience in the middle that 10 percent is the click through to make an inquiry <coughs> excuse me so those are our top visitor locations i think the flags speak for themselves there um our main our main audience is the uk followed by us india philippines and australia but it's a very broad range across the world of people that come to visit us and that's a, a graph that you can see that shows how our visitors have grown. That blue line is the total visitors during each of the financial years from 2011 to 12. You can see that big peak in the first um, and second year of the pandemic. Um, and the proportion of UK visitors as well peaking there too. Um, and the pink line that runs across the top is the UK, is the UK percent of the learners that are UK based. And then just on the right hand side, how are people learning with us? Um, one to remember just now, 38.8 or roughly 40% of people using a mobile phone there, 3% um, on a tablet and about 58% using a desktop. Those figures haven't really changed much over the last few years. Generally speaking, that's been the proportion of, of um, device types that we've seen has been pretty steady. <clears throat> I just want to say a little bit about language use on OpenLearn because this is where we're heading with this. So we already have um, a section on OpenLearn. OpenLearn is Moodle based uh, called OpenLearn Cymru. Uh, there's a version of this in English and a version of this in Welsh. And the materials on there are translated. We have someone working in the Open University in Wales specifically on OpenLearn who is a Welsh speaker. A great deal of, of work is translated um, that they feel is going to be popular and in fact is desired by uh, the Welsh Government to support various different initiatives over the last few years. So that's all supported. The navigation is in Welsh as well. Um, and um, it's it's really good. We're really delighted to have that. And it's become a much bigger endeavour over the years. You can see there's 29 items in that section. I can't possibly begin to pronounce what that is in Welsh. But so that's a really good canon of work there. <clears throat> We're also able to publish, obviously, courses and videos in other languages as well. And that's really about putting that content inside of what is effectively an English language website. Uh, we also have a bit of Ukrainian, which I'll talk about in a bit, um, and a little bit of Chinese as well. So it's ostensibly in English, though. I would say 99% of the website is in English. There's about a thousand courses on there, so it's it's enormously in English. So. A year ago, obviously, we all know about the invasion of Ukraine. Um, just a little quote here from the UN to say it was the fastest and largest displacement of people since World War II. There's so many things that have shocked us in the news in the last last few years. Um, this felt really horribly shocking and really quite close to home, quite scary, I thought, too. Um, and while scratching my head thinking, well, what can we do about this? How, how can OpenLearn help? What, what can we do really just sort of desperate 
helping on our in our own communities and the people that we know but but how how can we as an institution respond to this open end wasn't the only response but there was we were a significant response to this problem in trying to use the tools we had basically um, we could see as well this is another united nations source here where people were going as they were leaving this is a, a map from last year about where people were heading to from ukraine um, and from our perspective of our, of our analytics, this was very interesting to us. So my colleague Ben was mapping this quite carefully as it unfolded. But the open, from the open and analytics perspective, the learning preferences of Ukrainians, generally speaking, prior to the 14th of February last year, um, there was nothing really special to say about them. Their, in, their topics of interest were the same as pretty much everybody else. Um, they had, there was nothing really that sort of separated them out from, from everyone else. Um, but from the point of that invasion, the Ukrainian learners we could clearly see were rapidly switching to looking at language courses, almost just universally. It was English, French and German on open learn and anything relating to workplace skills as well. So that was a real kind of, oh, that was a real moment. That's what they're doing. They must be a clever bunch if they're doing all of this in English. Uh, so what about everybody else? So what we decided to do was really look at how we could potentially translate some of our materials into Ukrainian for these learners. So the first thing we did was we put together um, an English, a page in English of a bunch of resources, free online resources for Ukrainian settling in the UK. And this was a, a collection of courses that were about English, French and German, how to learn those languages, because we could see what people were looking for. Um, there was also, there. if you look at this page as well, you'll see at the bottom of the page, uh, there are many links to how to find support in the UK, charities, where to go, all the kind of information that was gathered by our colleagues um, to support the, the, anyone who was coming to the UK as a, as a refugee. So it was a really good collection of material and some advice in there as well. Um, the courses that were pulled out were provided on advice from um our own data and also from the uh, government affairs team at the university so they were very much in contact with the government how is the university going to support ukrainians and they wanted us to sh to, to highlight um, well-being and mental health resources so those courses that were translated and articles as you can see language learning plus mental health resources as well supporting children too <clears throat> That's the link to the page, and obviously this will be shared after the after the session. Um, it was very interesting, though. In fact, interesting, putting it mildly, but the page was launched um, in May 2022, and within two months, it was the seventh most popular page on the platform. It had bypassed everything, and there's a lot of pages on the platform, but it was immensely popular. And then um, to January 2023, it had um, almost 92,000 views. So, and that's just the page in English. Um, so it, it it was it was presented by various different networks, um, and um, it was it surprised everyone how popular that page become became. So in the summer, we thought, okay, this is all great. This stuff's all in English. What are we going to do now? And um, we decided to translate six of the most popular courses on this page, um, plus some of the articles on how to write a CV, etc. Uh, into Ukrainian and that included translating the certificates and the digital badges as well um, and that work was interesting because trying to find a Ukrainian translator was quite hard um, the people the agency that we had gone through had said can't get Ukrainian translators at the moment not surprisingly um, I happen to know someone who is a Ukrainian speaker so between us we patched together three different sources to get some of this work translated and we added the Ukrainian language pack to OpenLearn as well to take the alphabet, which obviously is very different from the English. Um, and that's the page. You may recognize it. It's the English page that has quite literally been translated into Ukrainian. We're able to give one of the translators access to the platform so that she could really see for herself um, how things were coming together, thinking about also things that always translate very well in terms of next and and all the kind of navigation things that we were trying to say <clears throat> to say nothing of some of the colloquialisms that were inside some of the, the courses so not everything was translated but as much as we could do which was as i say six courses and articles in that period in the summer 
I mean, it was quite a labor of love. Loads of things broke behind the scenes. It was pretty complicated, actually. Um, and it was one thing to get the courses translated, but then we had to deal with all of the navigation that was wrapped around it as well. So this is what was translated. Um, everyday English, English in the world today, languages at work, writing a CV, understanding your sector, making sense of mental health. And again, all those links to the legal advice, the government and the charity resources too. Um, so it was a real team effort to get it all sorted. Um, certainly from a technical perspective, I would say it was probably the toughest part. Um, I'm not heavily technical, um, but I do know that it was a bit of a mess behind the scenes, but we got there in the end. I'm just going to show you what some of this looks like. So to compare the English with the Ukrainian, so you can see how it looked on the site. So that is the course description page for English in the World Today. And then on the right hand side, the course description page for that course in Ukrainian. And not just the course, but all of the navigation in between. So this is quite heavily modified and adapted Moodle. And you can see you've got the title, the free statement of participation on the right hand side where you're talking about, about the course, how many hours of study, the reviews and the buttons, how to enroll, and um, everything had to be turned on its head and translated into Ukrainian for it to be anything like a meaningful experience. Happy to say that that's had three and a half out of five stars reviewed by people, um, Ukrainians who have studied the course. Just another thing here. So if we dr uh, drill down into one of the activities within that course, um, if you ignore the fact at the top, you've got one which has got the enrollment button in it and one which has already shown that, that someone has completed the course. Um, you can see how that activity works in the middle of the page in the blue box, activity one and the, and the revealing of the comment. All of those things had to be sort of mapped as well. And then on the left hand side, there's the translation of the structure of the of the course, the course content. That's my Ukrainian statement of participation. So that's my free certificate. And the, the badge as well had to be redrawn and translated too. So the whole thing hangs together. And the rest of this certificate, the certificate runs to three pages. It shows all the different sections of the course that you've passed um, and the learning outcomes as well. So you get a robust certificate that's yours that sits on your OpenLearn profile in Ukrainian. So just a bit of data on that then the page was launched in September with the translated resources on it. And to the end of January, there were 4,367 4, course views of those translated courses. So that's pretty good. Um, we'd like to see more, but um, we we're very happy with that. And um, just wanted to say a little thing about the mobile uses, usage. So you remember when we were looking at open and overall, we have roughly speaking that 40%, 38, 39% of our learners using a mobile. When we look at the Ukrainian resources, we can see very clearly that the ones that have been translated, it's mostly, it's the majority of those people are looking at it from a mobile phone. No surprises there, I suppose. Um, in terms of location, 16% of those people looking at those resources in Ukrainian were in Ukraine and 67% in the UK. Um, so, I just want to I just go back to that. I think really the point about the mobile usage was really was, a, again, a, a big reminder to us that uh, forced migrants, uh, people on the move are not using desktop computers, not surprisingly to study, and that this really has shone a light on our mobile experience. If we want to be truly open and accessible to everyone, having it in other languages is one thing, but actually making sure that that mobile experience, mobile experience is the best it can be is really, really important. Um, so that's given us a lot to think about when we think about um, uh, um, migrants using our site. So uh, just finally then to say what our next steps are, um, just going to talk through these. The first one is the improvements to language pack implementation. It was a bit of a mess. It wasn't very good. Um, and we really want to improve that process so that we can apply other, um, other languages to the platform much more easily, switch them on as and when we're able to, when we get the funding to do other translations. As it stands at the moment, we are seeking funding for more Ukrainian translation, and it looks like we are going to be funded by 
specific charity that's interested in this. Um, so we're hoping to take that further. So there'll be a really good body of work and get the rest of those English courses and articles on that Ukrainian page translated into Ukrainian. Um, we're also seeking funding from a donor to develop a mobile app. And that would enable us to do something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, which is to take that learning offline so that obviously we know that there's a, Mo a Moodle app uh, as well, a Moodle study app. But this is something that will be fully translated. So all the navigation in the app will be completely translated. All the content will be translated, but it will be a subset of OpenLearn. So you would download what you wanted to study. If you have poor connectivity, connectivity you can study offline and, you're, and the tracking of that learning still takes place in the app. And then when you're back online, your progress uploads again so that you've always got that experience of having a really good profile. You can keep all of your badges and certificates to yourself. It doesn't matter if you're offline as long as you've been able to download what you need to study. Um, so again, a really important thing there. We're looking at um, working with other donors to, for example, translate into French, because we feel that's extremely important. We've been told it's extremely important for countries in Africa. Um, some of the lowest um, socioeconomic groups in Africa will be speaking French or can speak French. Um, and ditto Syri um, di not Syrian, di ditto Arabic for other uh, migrants as well. If you can't all speak um, Arabic, many people can read it. So we're looking at those two languages as possibly moving to next in terms of working with donors. So we could hopefully see a future whereby we've got a range of apps in different languages to support people with OER in their language that, in languages that are needed most. Um, and actually, also, Rina, yeah, can I interrupt? I just got a question that seems pertinent at this moment. So Anna's asked about how many language packs does OpenLearn have? Um, and she didn't know you had Spanish and French content on the site. Uh, do you have the language packs for them as well? Um, I think we do, but that only really relates to when we're teaching Spanish. So, for example, um, there's level one, two and three Spanish content that comes out of the curriculum. And um, many of those courses will require you, once you move up from level one, to be able to read your what you're being taught in Spanish. Um, so we have to have Spanish on the site because it reflects that 5% of our curriculum, <clears throat> excuse me, ditto German, Italian and the other languages, but that does not include the navigation, excuse me. <clears throat> so that would just be the teaching materials inside the course. I don't know how many language packs we've got on the site, if I'm honest with you, but I can find out. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, I, is, that, is that okay? So when I said, ah, so that sounds like the language packs haven't been applied for those languages yet. Okay. Um, so final point just to make here is the, the development of a language toggle for OpenLearn. And so what that would mean is when we got, um, got up ahead of steam with another set of materials, certainly the first in the queue for that would be Welsh, that you would be able to come into OpenLearn and you could toggle um, how you saw the site, the whole of the navigation of the site. Um, so Welsh would be the first contender for that. Then I guess, as we, and the current trajectory we're on, that would be Ukrainian. I would imagine looking forward a couple of years, then we might also introduce French. Um, so that's the kind of roadmap we're on. All of that would need to come through our development office um, and be funded by donors because this is pure outreach work. Um, so yes, that that's our vision, and this whole Ukrainian. Uh, uh, translation activity has taught us a lot. It's enabled us to kind of really think about other languages on OpenLearn um, and really just extending the social mission beyond English speaking content. I don't think you could translate all of OpenLearn. It would take you years. It's just masses of it. And then you'd have to keep it updated. So that's the other headache to it is it's hard enough keeping the English versions up to date of everything we've got. Imagine a thousand courses. It's it's really it's a whole project just to keep all that work going um, to then do that in all the other languages is going to be quite an overhead. So all of this will rely on um, external funding. Um, so that's me done, actually. Trina, I'm going to give you a round of applause from where I am. 
So shall we invite uh, any other questions as well? Um, if you want to pop them in the chat, uh, I will uh, repeat them back for Petrina. I'm very happy to turn uh, microphones and cameras on as well. If you'd like to uh, pop your mic on and just ask the, the question directly. Uh, Paul has said that was wonderful. And Anna has said, thank you, Petrina. Um, so um, I don't think there are any other questions, but I'll pause for a minute or so, just so people can pop them in the chat if they want to. Uh, Anna said, Arabic brings, brings its own special challenge, as we've discovered on Open Learn Create, because it is right aligned. Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, I'm sure it does. In fact, we've already asked, we've asked our developers, uh, Moodle developers, to uh, look at that for us. So we're anticipating the joy that that will bring. Um, so yes, that's something they're already working on behind the scenes as to how we might bring that into the platform. My, my brain just kind of implodes when I think how on earth we would bring uh, Arabic into the whole of the navigation of the site. I need someone to sit down and explain that to me. But um, thank you, Anna. I know you've been there. So thank you. And I said, oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Any other questions or comments? I'm just, uh, I have to say, I'm really impressed. Um, and it sounds like, um, you know, when you were talking about the way that the students in, in the Ukraine and other uh, people in the Ukraine have been using it, it sounds really like it's a really valuable um, resource. And obviously, in the current situation, uh, what a wonderful thing to be able to offer as well. Any other questions or comments before we uh, finish? And beautifully on time, Petrina. Thank you. you. get a gold star. Thanks. <laughs> OK, I'm going to assume there's no more questions and I'm going to stop the recording. So just a final thank you, um, Petrina, for a really interesting, wonderful session. And people will be able to come and watch the uh, recording later on today as well. Um, so uh, other people will be able to appreciate your hard work as well. So uh, another mini applause from me over here. And I'll stop the recording uh, and uh, we'll finish the session. <laughs>